Hey guys, it's Jules and this is Lupus Diaries. episode of Lupus Diaries. And no, this is not the meal plan video, pero promise ginagawa ko na. Filming cooking videos is hard guys, pero gagawin ko para sa inyo. Ang dami pang nakapila na new videos. As you can see, I'm in another area that's so exciting. So make sure to click that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any of the new videos. And if you want to watch the previous episodes of Lupus Diaries, make sure to click the link up here or in the description box below. Okay, we have a lot to talk about today, so let's jump into the video. To those who are new here, hi, I'm Jules and I have been living with lupus for 11 years now. But even so, every time I look at my blood and urinalysis results, I get super confused to what they're all about. All the SGPT, SGOT, C3, ESR, ABCD. <laughs> Well, you get the gist. They're super confusing. I made this video to help both you and I understand what the results are all about. Feel free to get a pen and paper or just take down notes on your phone because this can get a little bit technical. I divided the discussion into four categories. Blood, liver, kidney, and lupus activity. But like I said in the disclaimer, I am not a doctor and this is all based on the research I did and what I understood from it. We all get our complete blood count or CBC taken. The first thing I look at are my white blood cells or WBC. WBC, like I learned in class, are the body's soldiers to fight off bacteria and whatnot. But when you have lupus, white blood cell count can be very low. Actually, this is one of the flare indicators for me. There are five types of white blood cells. Neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils or basophils. I don't really know how to pronounce it. You can also see the count of these different WBC cells in the results. Each group of white blood cells plays a different role in the body's immune response. Both lupus and prednisone tend to lower our lymphocyte count, so make sure you watch out for that. I also look at my red blood cells or RBC. Did you know that 40% of people with lupus will be anemic at some point during the course of the disease? It hasn't happened to me yet, but it's still good to know what your RBC count is. My next indicator is my platelet count. Like I said in my first ever lupus episode, my platelet count was very low and they thought it was dengue. Platelets help us when we are bleeding out. They form clots to help prevent or stop the bleeding. In the case of lupus, our own body destroys our platelet. In an autoimmune disease, the body mistakenly attacks healthy cells. And lupus is an autoimmune disease. Diba sabi ko nga, bobo yung immune system natin. Experts think that thrombocytopenia or low platelet count affects 20 to 40% of people with lupus. Other common tests that I do are SGPT and SGOT. These two are always grouped together. They are actually used to determine the status of your liver. SGPT or serum glutamic pyruvic transaminase is an enzyme that is normally present in liver and heart cells. SGPT is released into the blood when the liver or heart are damaged. 
Therefore, a very high level of SGPT can mean that your liver is damaged. Meanwhile, SGOT or serum glutamic oxaloacetic transaminase measures the level of aspartate aminotransferase, also called AST. AST is one of the enzymes that help the liver convert food into energy. An SGOT test may be used to help your doctor determine if your liver is damaged. When liver cells are damaged, SGOT leaks into the bloodstream and increases the level of this enzyme. But it is good to note that SGOT is found in different organs of the body, including your kidneys, muscles, heart, and brain. So if your SGOT is high, it can mean that one of these organs are damaged, not just the liver. Therefore, you need more tests to determine which one is really damaged. But hopefully your SGOT will never get that high. When looking at kidney health, the most important indicator is the protein level. That is why we always get our protein-creatinine ratio test. You can see the level of protein in both the urinalysis and the protein-creatinine ratio test. Although in the ratio test, the number is more specific. Protein in the urine, otherwise known as proteinuria, is an indication of glomerular disease, which means your kidneys have a reduced ability to maintain a balance of certain substances in the bloodstream, including protein. Protein level should only be zero or trace. If there is protein present in your urinalysis or protein creatinine ratio count, it could mean that your kidneys are damaged. Creatinine, on the other hand, is a chemical compound left over from energy-producing processes in your muscles. Healthy kidneys filter creatinine out of the blood. Creatinine exits your body as a waste product in urine. A creatinine test is a measure of how well your kidneys are performing their job of filtering waste from your blood. In lupus, high creatinine levels may indicate kidney damage. The protein-creatinine ratio is used to quantify your protein urea. Instead of listing down positive, negative, or trace, it specifically quantifies the number of protein in your urine. You'll be able to see the actual count of protein present in your urine. Needless to say, a high protein count means you have kidney damage. And last, but obviously not the least, are the tests that determine if your lupus is active. First one is the ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate. ESR is an indirect indicator of inflammation. A high ESR suggests that your lupus is active, although it can also get high if you are currently battling an infection outside of lupus. A low test is reassuring. Although the test is simple and cheap, it is non-specific and subject to inaccuracy. So it's best to let your doctor tell you the interpretation of your results. Next is the C-reactive protein or CRP. And just like ESR, it is an indirect indication of inflammation, but it is more specific in the detection of disease activity. A high CRP test result is a sign of acute inflammation. It may be due to serious infection, injury, or chronic disease. C3 complement blood test measures a specific type of protein in your blood called the C3 proteins. As part of your immune system, the C3 proteins destroy germs that can make you sick. Sometimes, the C3 proteins attack your healthy cells by mistake. C3 complement blood test shows how part of your immune system are responding to harmful substances. This test can also help doctors diagnose autoimmune diseases like lupus and it can help monitor our disease. Unlike the other tests, when lupus is active, C3 is usually low. Now we've reached the end. Nakakapagod yun guys. Sana naintindihan nyo lahat ng sinabi ko. Feel free to rewatch the video, replay the video every time you get your results back. 
give this video a thumbs up if you learned something or if you want more videos like this me talking about science terms and all of that <laughs> <laughs> if you have any more clarifications, suggestions, or if you just want to correct me kasi may mali ako nasabi, please do so in the comment section below. I'd like you guys to correct me kasi baka nga misinformation, you know? But I did my research and hopefully everything I said is right. <laughs> please comment below if you have anything to add. You can also hit me up, message me directly on Facebook or Instagram. Links to my social accounts are below in the description box. Please help us reach a thousand subscribers by clicking that subscribe button and sharing our channel to your family and friends. I would truly appreciate it and the Lupus community will thank you too for helping me spread awareness of Lupus. And I can make more videos like this. As always, Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and to my fellow lupus warriors, let's keep on fighting and don't forget to love you. Bye! See you in the next video. <laughs>